St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. And greetings and welcome to all of you. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from an anonymous donor from Toronto, Ontario. And the Mass is offered in Thanksgiving for finding happy and healthy retirement for the health and well-being of the members of her family. And may God continue to guide us and bless us. Because of you, today will be a richer day for so many people across Canada. And we thank you very much for the gift of this telecast. And we begin this day as we should always begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. We gather this day and we stand on holy ground. We stand in the presence of our God. We acknowledge that God is present to us and that God has gifted us so much. And yet so often, we haven't expressed our gratitude by the way that we've lived. And so we ask forgiveness of God and of each other. You were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, your spirit made us your children, confident to call you Father. Increase your spirit within us and bring us to our promised inheritance and grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that Moses had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, Here I am. Then God said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. God said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? God said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. The word of the Lord. It is the Lord who forgives all your enemies. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. I'm almost certain that each of us can remember certain beautiful examples of spontaneity, the spontaneity of the kids, especially when it comes to matters of faith or comments about God or, or Catholic traditions. You know, I can remember that when my dad died, one of my sisters had the, the custom of going to the cemetery, and she would go to pray or she'd go to bring flowers. Because she at that time had two preschoolers, the two preschoolers went along with her to the cemetery. One day, Caitlin, the eldest of the two, turned to my sister a little annoyed and said, listen, Mom, if Grandpa's in heaven, why do we continue to visit the cemetery to see him? It made a lot of sense, the question. To her, the spontaneity, the direct question of a child is that type of reference that Jesus makes in this comment today. In the gospel passage, Jesus, in a moment of intimacy with God in his prayer, says, Father, you've hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. But the statement has to be seen in the context, and we have to look back and read the verses that come just before it. One of the frustrations most deeply felt by Jesus was mentioned in the earlier verses in the same chapter when Jesus complained of children of another sort. And he said, to what will I compare this generation? It's like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. It's the difference between being childlike and childish. Corbinetti says that being childlike embraces growth, discovery, and newness. Being childish is stubborn, foot-stomping rigidity. But the second element comes in the verses immediately preceding the text of Jesus, and something that prompted him to make his comment. Jesus was denouncing the cities in which he had performed most of the miracles and in spite of that, people didn't change their ways. He mentioned specifically Chorazin and Bethsaida, both known as the places of advanced studies in religion. The other city was that of Sodom, which was condemned by the prophets for its immorality, and Tyre and Capernaum. But in today's text, Jesus' Jesus's reference to the wise and the intelligence refers to the teachers of the law, to the high priest, to the scribes. That is really, it's the small group where the social and religious power rested at the time of Jesus. They're important religious, self-assured people who often despise the poor and the marginalized. But more than that, they considered themselves to be the recipients of God's revelation and experts in its interpretation. By his strong statement, Jesus is saying very clearly and challenging their authority. After cursing the cities, Jesus turns and prays aloud to God, praising God for the wisdom that God gives so freely to the so-called uneducated, the poor, and those who struggle to survive among those who are learned and clever, but are lacking or not, compassionate, just, or truthful. The theologian Gutierrez points out that the text does not in any way imply that ignorance is a virtue. 
and being wise is a flaw. Intelligent people are not necessarily conceited, and uneducated people are not always humble. The preference doesn't come from moral or religious tradition, but rather from a human situation in which God is revealed upsetting, challenging, or reversing human values and criteria. And so often proud, overly rational, and self-sufficient people are not well disposed to be enlightened by the revelation of Jesus. In the first reading from the book of Exodus, God is revealed in the burning bush to Moses, a very simple shepherd, and Moses is afraid. But God tells him that he's heard the cry of his people. He's heard the cry of the oppression that they've experienced, and that it is Moses he's entrusting with the liberation of the people. God gives Moses that mission because of the clamor of the people and because God is so very compassionate. Moses is told all of this while feeling quite insecure, quite fearful and inadequate. He's invited to trust in God, that God is the God of creation, the God of life, the God of the promises to Moses and the Israelites, the God of freedom and human dignity. And just as Moses is given a participation in God's mission, so too are we, in spite of our inadequacies, in spite of our insecurities, in spite of our anxieties. We too are called to trust in a God who loves, a God who is compassionate, a God who invites us to recognize the revelation and the presence of God in the events of our daily lives and the events of all those around us, especially the poor and the marginalized. We are called to affirm that we stand constantly on holy ground wherever we are in this world because all is the handiwork of God's magnificent creation. Henry Nouwen, I think, sums up what I'd like to express in a prayer that he composed, and it says as follows. Dear God, as you draw me deeper into your heart, I discover my companions on the journey are women and men loved by you as fully and as intimately as I am. In your compassionate heart, there's a place for all of them. No one is excluded. Give me a share in your compassion, dear God, so that your unlimited love may become visible in the way I love my brothers and my sisters. Amen. Please join me as we pray. We pray this day remembering the many people who join us via television for the many intentions that they've asked that we remember in this Eucharist. For them and for all the intentions that they've mentioned, we pray to the Lord. We pray that we be a compassionate people, especially at this time when we see so much in the news of the people who are suffering in the Horn of Africa, that our hearts reach out to them and that we do whatever we can to reach out and help them at this time for the, ourselves, that we be compassionate like our God. We pray for help. And for this, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray also that we be peacemakers and that we have that gift to let peace reign in our hearts, in our homes, in our places of work. And for that gift for all of us, we pray to the Lord. Lord and all of this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer which earth has given the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual food. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, it will become 
our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice that we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. Thank you. And pray, friends, that this, our sacrifice, may become acceptable to God the Father Almighty. And God of power, giver of the gifts that we bring, accept the offering of your church and make it the sacrament of our salvation. And this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And Father all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. You have no need of our praise, and yet our desire to thank you is itself your gift. Our prayer of thanksgiving adds nothing to your greatness, but makes us grow in your grace through Jesus Christ our Lord. And glory and honor are his as heaven and earth, angels and archangels cry out in unending praise. holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. And when supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. He gave the cup to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread and this saving cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. And Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love together with Benedict, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, and the entire church. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. And bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all and make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. And may we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Faithful to the teaching of Jesus, we pray just as he taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all needless anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Yes. And let us offer to each other a sign of that peace. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, and happy are we who are called to share in this supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. And may the body and the blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Would those of you at home join with me now in this prayer to the Holy Spirit? Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. O God, on the first Pentecost, you instructed the hearts of those who believed in you by the light of the Holy Spirit. Under the inspiration of the same Spirit, give us a taste for what is right and true and a continuing sense of his presence and power through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us pray. Lord, may the Eucharist you give us bring us to salvation and keep us faithful to the light of your truth. And we ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us go in the peace of Christ. And as we go, we can think of Moses, who probably in his insecurity, his anxiety, was concerned. But if you remember my saying, my little favorite saying, the will of God will never lead us, 
to where the grace of God cannot sustain us. Have a good day. Our thanks to an anonymous donor from Toronto, Ontario, whose generous contribution made the televising of today's Mass possible. In the summer months, as you know, everything slows down a little, including our mail. And especially this summer with the Canada Post strike, everything slows down, that is, except our expenses in broadcasting the Daily Mass. Winter, fall, summer, spring, they stay the same. So do keep us in mind and remember, whatever you can send us will help keep Daily Mass on television.